Hey guys, wanted to talk about um, making videos. Um, a lot of fishing videos and things that I watch. Um, I notice that some people have some really good techniques and I never really know what they're doing and how they do it. And I know for some people who are fishing guys, may not be techie guys and know how to make these videos. So um, I was just gonna show you real simply how I make my videos and I'm not showing you because I think my videos are particularly great but I've got it down to where it's pretty easy for me to do. So um, I think when it comes to fishing videos, keeping them simple, keeping them to the point, you know, fishing, catching fish, showing fish, that type of thing, showing the surroundings is a good way to go. Now you could get really advanced. Somebody like John B does really awesome video editing. He's got a lot of drone footage. He's got like a lot of footage with the camera sitting in the grass and some out of focus background and you know you can really go nuts um, but not all of us are going to have that kind of time and in a community where we're just sharing tips and techniques sometimes just getting the stuff on to YouTube is the way to go um, but still that can prove a challenge for some people because not everybody knows how to edit video so what I was going to do is walk you through my process show you what I do and then hopefully it'll simplify things for people out there who are trying to figure out how to make it happen so um, the first thing that you're going to want to get, I think, is an action camera. I use a GoPro Hero 3 still. Um, I know there's 4K cameras out there, there's better cameras than this one, but I haven't needed anything more than this yet. Um, hang on, let me unravel this. This is the GoPro Hero 3. It's a very simple camera. Um, it's 1080p. It has different settings for uh, wide view, narrow view, I just set it to wide view all the time. I set it to 1080p at 60 frames. Um, and I'll talk more about why 60 frames is important to me later. Um, and I have it on a chest harness. And I used to have it on a hat mount, um, but I noticed my footage, uh, what, what you wanna do when you're recording is you wanna reduce motion in your video footage so you're not you know, getting people seasick from watching your video or whatever it is. So when you have this thing mounted on your hat and you're like looking around as you're fishing, that motion transmits through that video and it really looks terrible. So what I found is the least likely place for your body to move or the, the place that your body moves the least is right here in the core. So the chest cam is the way to go. So this is a cheap $7 mount. Um, this camera, I bet you could get for a couple hundred bucks on eBay, maybe less. And there's other cameras out there. I know the Yi Cam, Y I Cam on Amazon is a really good one. It's 4K. And we can talk more about why 4K would be important also. Um, but just for basics, 1080p, GoPro Hero 3. A couple of things I like to do is get my setup to where it's going to record for a long duration without me having to touch it. And with a GoPro, that's hard to do. These batteries typically last anywhere from 40 to 50 minutes max and sometimes I fish for two or three hours at a time. So what I did was I bought an aftermarket, let me find it here, just a little micro SD card that goes in this camera, and I bought a 64 gig, and a 64 gig SD card, you wanna buy a fast card so you don't have any write issues to the card, and the 64 gig card can hold about four and a half hours of video. So that's more than enough for usually the fishing trips that I take. Now you'll notice on this camera, I have it in a mount, but it's not waterproof. I don't like mounting my GoPro in a waterproof housing unless I'm gonna be in the river or doing something with a lot of splashing, but typically I can keep it dry. I don't fish in the rain if I don't have to, so it's never an issue for me. But one thing I do, I don't know if I can get this on there for you guys, yeah. If you see right there on the side of that cam, I have gouged out right around that microphone because a lot of people talk about how the, um, a lot of people talk about how the GoPro mic is horrible. It's not great, but if you give it the ability to capture your voice and your audio, it doesn't do as bad as everybody says. And also when it's here on your chest, it's close proximity to your mouth, so it's gonna sound a lot better, especially if you have that little hole gouged out. So I get a little plastic uh, uh, mount, and then I take a little tool, razor knife, Dremel, whatever you can use, and just kind of gouge out the area where the mic is. Of course, you're gonna gouge out that area with the camera not in the housing, because you don't want to damage your camera. Um, and the second thing I do, once I get the housing right, is I get a USB cable. Again, if you look on the side of this camera, you can see a little mini USB cable connection. So how I like to record long form, I'm just gonna put this on. It's probably gonna mess up my mic that's on my chest right now. 
So let's say this is on. It's a little, it's a little twisted, and I would have it fixed, you know, if I was going to go fishing with it. What I do is I take this cable right here, and I come under the elastic. So it kind of gets held in place against my body. Because the last thing you want is this cable to be getting yanked while you're fishing. And you don't want it up here near your hands while you're using your rod and stuff. And then you take this cable right here, and you get yourself a battery charger or a battery source. This one is made by Anker, A-N-K-E-R, available on Amazon. They make one with two ports, and they make one with a single port. This one has two ports, so you could charge your phone and run your cam, or run two cams, or whatever you want to do off of this one. I just use this one because it's big. This will charge my iPhone six times. This will run my GoPro for four and a half hours, and it'll still have half the life left. So it's a really robust camera. So then you plug this in. This is before we turn on the camera. That's important about the GoPro. Plug that in, you can see the blue lights are activated. So that means it's sending a charge. The GoPro is red, it's charging. Now I turn it on. Okay, so once the GoPro's on, it's gonna be using the battery. Now if the GoPro's on, when you plug in the battery, um, it will use the camera battery first and go dead, and then start to charge the battery off of this battery pack. That's not what you want. You wanna have the camera off, you want to plug the battery pack into the camera, then turn the camera on. When you do that, the camera will then run off of the battery pack. And that's an important differentiation to make in how you plug this thing up and how it works. So once I get it all set up, I just put this in my pocket, fold it all up, and that's it. This is how I film. So like when you're moving around, you can see this camera doesn't move as twitchy as if you had it mounted on your cap. So that's basically it. So you come in here, you set it to movie, you set it to 1080p, um, or 1080, 60p, and then you hit record. All right. Oh, no SD card. So you'd hit record, and you look down, and you make sure that red light is blinking, okay? Because that's key. If that red light is not blinking, it's not recording, and you can catch the biggest fish of your life, and you're going to miss it. So make sure that thing's recording, and once you're recording, this is in your pocket, you kind of forget about it. Other than just being in front of you, it's not really a problem. That's how I like to capture most of my footage, um, just straight out in front of me. Now, you never see my face. Um, you see my hands. Sometimes fish look funny when they're in front of the camera, but you know that's just the, the price of having an action cam. They're all like that. So anyway, that's, that's the basics. A couple hundred bucks. This is like 30, 30 bucks for the charger, probably eight or nine bucks for the cable, eight or nine dollars for the harness on Amazon. And then you're looking at, you know, if you get a used GoPro Hero 3, you could get a Yi cam, I think, 80 to 150 bucks will probably get you done on the cam. Once you get all those things done, you're recording and you're capturing footage. Now I'm going to cut from here and I'm going to go to the editing process on my computer and hopefully be able to share with you how I edit and what I do. Now everybody's going to have different systems and this is where some, some of you may not be able to follow along with me because you don't have a Mac, but I do all my editing on a Mac. And I maintain, if you have a Mac, you don't even need Final Cut Pro. You could just use iMovie and it would work perfect. So let's cut here, and then I'm going to uh, turn on the computer and do a screencast. All right, let's you know pretend we went out and we used our GoPro and we collected some footage of us fishing. So I'm gonna walk you through kind of the simple steps of editing. Now I'm on a Mac, so not everybody's gonna be able to do what I do if they have a Windows machine, but a lot of these editing softwares are out there and they're the same type of concept. So let's pretend I just got back I have the um, GoPro. I pulled the mini card out. I put it in a card adapter. I'm going to import the footage. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up iMovie. And as you can see, it's right here. I already have it open down here in the tray. So I open up iMovie. Now just so you guys know, I typically don't use iMovie. I use Final Cut Pro. But I'm going to use iMovie right now with you guys because this is probably what a lot of you will use. And it's free. So you might as well start here. Um, so you'll see me stumble and bump around and try to figure things out just like you would. So it's going to be learning experience for me too. It's kind of the same as Final Cut, just a little bit watered down, not as intricate. So I've put my card in. I opened iMovie. Now you'll notice as soon as you put in your SD card, it'll say import media and it comes up and shows you your clips. Now it may not always do that. 
So you might want to just say, I'm going to call it my movie one. Let's call it fishing. All right, let's do this. Let's just start a new movie. Uh, project Media iMovie Library, File, New Event, let's call it Fishing, Sample, Edit. And let's import media into that event. You'll see up here it says Fishing, Sample, Edit. And I know this is a clip where I caught fish. So I'm going to go with this clip right here and Import Selected. These might be your different fishing clips. And you'll see uh, the GoPro will segment these clips at about every 17 minutes it starts a new clip. Um, that's just the way they work. It does a, It's like a four gig file limit. But anyway, the 17 minute file right here is where I catch a fish. We're gonna use it for the sample. I imported it and you'll see a little circle. Okay, we have now imported. So you can see after it imports, you can put your, your cursor over here and it's going to skim across that and show you kind of where you're at and what's happening. And you can see that's where I catch a fish. But if this icon is too small and the skimming's happening too quickly, you can hit this gear, zoom in to that clip a little more, and now you can kind of zoom exactly where you want to go. Now I'm going to show you a couple shortcut keys. Um, so let's say right here is where I catch a fish. Now I'm going to go in here just before the cast, I'm going to hit I for in. That's the mark in point. And then I'm going to cruise until the fish is there just before I take a picture with my camera. And I'm going to hit out. O. Oh. So that gives you the clip of the time that I caught that fish. Now that clip is selected. You can hit the, the letter E and that will drop it down into the timeline. That E stands for an edit point, right? Um, and you can put, there's different shortcuts for different things. But let's say, okay, I just wanted to simply show me catching a fish. That would be easy enough, right? Um, but let's do like one of those fancy intros, right? So let's do, I kind of like the way that looks coming in there. I got a little too excited. Put your hand trip. I'm trying, trying to, to get that section where the water ripples. So I'm going to go in. Out of its mouth. And then I got a little too excited. So I like the trail here. Let's just that do was that. Trip this last time. And hit out, okay? Um, and then let's hit E again, and that'll drop that little clip. But I'm going to move this to the beginning because we're going to make this. Um, nice thing about editing, you should move things around. So you can see the first clip here, second clip there, and it doesn't mean we're stuck with that. So I could find out like, hey, I want where that ripple starts, right there. Okay, so I could put, uh, I could hit the B tool, which is blade. That's not true. We could just trim it. We can grab it and just drag this in until we shorten it to where it starts to go right there. So, all right. Now I can select that clip and I can also go up here. You see this little clock? That's a timing tool, speed. I can say um, slow, speed, and you can say auto. And it does that, right? And I want to stop it right there. And I want to get more of the actual thing, okay? So I have a slow motion clip, which might give you some B-roll. Now right over here, this is your volume control. You can actually turn the volume. You can see 100%, 5%, 45%. You can go up and down with that volume. When I do slow motion, I just turn the volume down because it sounds like, sounds like robot voice or something. So I do that. So now we have two clips here. Let's see, this one, this cast is about right there. So I'll mark that spot. M is mark. And that's where I'll come in. I got a fish. And then let's not do the picture. And let's just hit mark here. And I'm going to come into that marker point. And that's gonna be the end of the video. So I might want a title. So you go up here and you hit titles. I just like starting with custom. It's the easiest one, if it's here. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's just, here's title centered. Let's just do that. Um, title centered. And you can zoom in on this clip too. With that zoom tool right up here, see that zoom? 
And that way you can edit that title down because you don't want that title to necessarily be there the whole time. And you could sit, see how the title's right in the center and it comes up title. We highlight that clip, go up here and double click title and just say bass fishing 2017. Something like that, right? Um, leave it there. And then you might want to put a transition. That title, you might want it to come in and come out like softly. Um, I don't know how to do it in this, this app. You can't do it in this app. It actually does come out. Okay, that's fine. So we come in, title, title fades. Okay, but it jump cuts to the other section. So maybe I want to cross dissolve that. So you drop, drop a cross dissolve here and it goes to that other one, and now the sound is there. But let's say you want some music. Um, you can go to My Media, Photos, iPhoto, Movie Library. Uh, da, da, da. I don't really know how to do music, but let's uh, see if we can do it. Let's come over here. I know that I've downloaded some music. Now, if you guys are looking for, um, there's a music file I just dropped in. You can do it as easily as going to your downloads and dropping it right into the program. Now, if you guys are looking for free music, um, NCS, No Copyright Sounds on YouTube, offers music. And you can sample the music. So we could take this music clip. We don't need the whole song, maybe. We just want it for an intro. We take a little piece of it, put it down here, right? Um, another shortcut key for this is Shift Z. If you hit Shift Z, it then puts the whole movie back into the frame so you can see what you're doing. And let's say we want that music to fade out uh, as it fades into that next clip. So you can pull this little thing back here and it shows you a crossfade. So this will come in, uh, and we may not want that music to start right up. We might want it to kind of ease in. So you start in. Okay, and that was a little short, so we might want to just drag it out, but have the fade be a little longer, and it was way too loud, so we could reduce it by about 20%. Go back, check it. Okay, and you can say, okay, well, I want the music done right when he, right when I set on it, like right there. Let's hit a marker, and we could actually drag that music straight out to that marker, so it'll actually end right when I go to set the hook. Well, that was quick. First cast. All right. With a decent hook set. You ain't getting off, buddy. Well, let's say I just want to end it there. So I come over here and I shorten that clip up even more. And I say, you know what, I really want to have a transition on the end of that. Um, and you put it there, and now when it ends, and that's it. So we've got a little short movie, Bass Fishing 2017, a transition from one clip to the next, the music fades. So you can see how simple it is to put these together. Um, I do quite a bit of this editing, so I might make it look easier than it really is. So up here in this window, in this picture window, you see these different little icons. Um, you have an anti-shake, you have a crop, you have color. So let's say I wanted to make this uh, more colorful. You see, if you watch the image, I can take it from black and white all the way up to like oversaturated. Um, sometimes the GoPro is a little flat looking, uh, but then again, sometimes it's a little green and yellow looking, so you could cool it off. You could, you could go heavy with the the tint or you could come really down low with the cooling. So sometimes I like to cool it off just a bit to where I can see some blue. Um, you can also increase and decrease your highs, like your, your brights right here. You see how the clouds are, are overblown at that point. Um, you can control some of that. You can brighten up the whole image by grabbing the middle and then you can kind of darken the other portions and crunch what they call crush the blacks. You could do all kinds of like little changes to the way the video looks. So it looks more rich or more produced or however you want it to look. Um, so basically that's, that's it, man. I mean, you really take your GoPro, strap it to your chest, bring it into the computer,
select these clips you want in your project, throw in some transitions, put on some music and titles, and you're off to the races. Now, um, managing everything else is really up to you, how you want to handle audio. I just use audio right off the GoPro. It's not terrible. This clip is actually audio right off the GoPro right here. So I can hear the details enough. I can hear the reel. That was quick. I can First hear pass. the birds chirping, the fish water DC jumping. Percent. Now, if that GoPro was in a waterproof housing, it would sound like this, and it wouldn't sound very good at all. So I, I just leave it in that un, unprotected housing, and then that way I can just go ahead and uh, have the audio straight off of that. And it makes editing a lot easier. Now, I could show you how to bring in different audio sources and things like that, but I think that's getting a little too deep. Now, once you're done with this, a lot of people say, well, what do I do? Up here, there's a couple things you can do. You can shoot straight to YouTube, set up your YouTube account and hit go, um, or you can hit send it to a file. I always send mine to a file on my computer and save the video, and then I upload that video, the resulting video to YouTube. Some people wanna just take the shortcut and go straight up to YouTube, which is fine. Um, there's arguments that the quality looks better when you save it to your computer, um, but that's you know neither here nor there, that's really preference. So you could just say, go to YouTube, you can put some information in here, you can call it unlisted, public, private, anything you're doing in YouTube and pretty much send it straight up. Um, but I like to export to file. Now when you export to file, you name it, um, Bass Catch, uh, iMovie, audio and video. You want both, you don't want just video only. You want, um, this is 1080-60p, high, compress faster. Um, yeah, I think we're fine. You could name it whatever you want. Bass Catch 2017. And then hit Next. And it says, where do you want to put it? Now, let's just throw it out on the desktop, just so we know where it is, if I can find a desktop. Joe's iMac. You know what? Let's just put it in Downloads. That's fine. And then it'll start saving out the movie. And then you can see right up here in the right-hand corner, the progress bar, or you can click it and see what it's doing. Okay, we're kind of done here, so let's just kill this program. And <clears throat> at this point, you would go to YouTube and upload your movie, but just so we could see what the movie looks like, let's open it up in Finder. Bass Catch 2014 is on top. And here's the video. Let's move this out of your way. I mean, it's not a very good video, but I'm just, you know, as a sample. You can kind of see the result. And all the color changes we made are there and everything. Uh, it looks good. So at that point, you could just upload that movie straight into uh, YouTube <clears throat> and put all your things, monetization, and, and add all your stuff. Now, when you're using the NCS, No Copyright Sounds Music, one thing they do ask if you read the fine print is that you credit their music. So at the end of every video, I just say music provided by you know, whatever song, NCS, featuring whoever, you know, however they list it, that's how I list it. And I think that's okay. I don't think there's any copyright issues there. I haven't been flagged or anything from YouTube for that. So really that's it. I mean, if you think about it in steps, you take the GoPro, you put a giant card in there so you can record long form, long periods of time. You get a battery to power the GoPro for long periods of time. You strap it all on, put a chest harness on, leave it in the wide angle, put it in a case that is not covering the microphone, then do your recording, bring your information home, open up your editor, whether it be iMovie Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere or whatever it is you use, pull your video stuff into the editor, drop the clips and pieces in that you want, transition between them, add some titles, throw in a little music. It's really that simple. So hope this helped you guys. Um, some of you guys that don't really do a lot of movies might need a little bit of direction so just wanted to walk you through that it wasn't real super clean and concise but just wanted to give you a feel of what I do all right